Hi, this is Darren from SimNation, just doing a quick recap video for for SNCFL, which is our Draft Day Sports College Football 2023 uh, league here at SimNation. Uh, highly recommended. It. It's a title from Wolverine Studios. Brooks and team do a great job with constantly updating it. Um, and I, I can't say enough about this game. In this genre, it's one of the best. Uh, so definitely take a look at it if you're interested in uh, college football simulations. Take a look at SNCFL if you want to play in a league uh, with a bunch of really good competitive coaches. We had some new coaches arrive this year who have kind of changed the dynamic of the league. Um, I'm going to dive right in. Try to keep this video shorter than normal. Um, just for uh, everyone's awareness, next weekend I'm going to release a bunch of how-tos, uh, both for the college football game and the pro football game, largely focusing on defense because that's what most people are asking me questions about. So uh, let's dive straight in. Um, so no change at the top. Maryland is still number one. Uh, I believe UCLA is still, UCLA is the new number two since the last time we talked. Ohio State lost to Maryland, so they bounced out. Um, UCLA is a Stewart team, one of his many, uh, and they're undefeated. They should stay undefeated through the rest of the season, so uh, they're in pretty good shape. We'll talk about Washington State, which is one of my teams in a moment. Uh, Miami coming in at number four. This is one of Gary's team, his premier team. They have clinched the Coastal and we'll be playing NC State in the um, championship game in a few weeks. Uh, Oklahoma, this is Steve. He has a very strong chance of winning the one of the two spots of the Big 12. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Ohio State, DP is back uh, in his first game, unfortunately, I think was against Maryland. Uh, they lost that one, but he's definitely got Ohio State dialed in pretty good. I know Stewart's a little bit mad at number seven for Western Michigan, but in fairness, they haven't really played anyone. Uh, they are undefeated, but they're a MAC team. So uh, I think Miami, Oklahoma, and Ohio State winning bumped them back three spots. Uh, LSU <clears throat> has had a great season. Uh, they've won SEC West. Uh, really good job for a team that was one of the lowest prestige teams around, but uh, we'll talk more about them later. Uh, Florida State, this is Sample. Uh, he's got um, them dialed in. Should be making the playoffs. I think they only have one game left, and I think that's probably against Florida. Uh, so no reason why they can't make it. They're not going to win the ACC Atlantic because NC State's won that. Uh, Florida comes in at number 10. This is Soa. He won the SEC East, uh, so he will meet uh, LSU in the championship game. Uh, North Carolina State won the Atlantic, as I mentioned before. This is Van. Great season from Van and NC State. They only have one loss this season, so tremendous job. Little controversy with Michigan coming in at number 13. They bounced pretty substantially backwards, and they've been off for the last two weeks. Don't know that I agree with that from the CPU, uh, but they play again, I think, this week, and they should snap back into the top probably five through seven spot. Uh, Kevin comes in at number 14 with Texas. They just lost to Maryland, so they got bounced back a little bit. Uh, but they're still very much in the running for uh, one of the two spots in the Big 12. We'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, Oklahoma State, this is Frankie. He's still in the race for one of those top two spots in the Big 12 as well. Um, uh, Stanford comes in at number 17. This is Skelter. Uh, he's got Stanford dialed in pretty well. They don't have a chance of winning the North, unfortunately, but if he continues to hover around that 17 spot, he could find himself in the playoffs with Stanford. Not probably the team he expected to be in the playoffs, but definitely he'll take it. Uh, rounding out the top 25 from a human perspective, Iowa State is back in at number 23. This is Shark. Iowa State can't win the Big 12, but they can make some noise, and they may be able to push upwards, uh, potentially to get to number 16 if some other teams ahead of them lose, and that there's strong potential for that. Um, so I want to dive right into the standings. Um, again, I'm trying to keep this video a little shorter than normal, because uh, next weekend I'm going to do quite a few videos. Uh, I mentioned uh, Van with NC State has won the Atlantic. Great season, 11-1. and one. 
Uh, Gary bounced back. His only two losses were to Washington State, who's in at number three, and then Florida State, who's in at number nine. Uh, so it really wasn't a question of whether he was going to win the Coastal. It's just, would he stay up near the top? And I, that answer is yes. Uh, he's done for the year, so is Van. Um, so those two's next game will be in the conference championship. And both those two teams should make the playoffs as well as Florida State. So the ACC should have three teams in this year's playoffs. I'm not going to talk about recruiting. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, in the AAC, this one's a little bit of a shock, candidly. Um, East Carolina has taken the East, uh, mostly because Central Florida and Cincinnati had a little bit of a down year. Um, I, I do expect Cable to bounce back at Central Florida. He lost a generational quarterback and struggled a little bit to replace him. No shock with Houston being up at the top. Uh, a little bit of shock with Memphis being down, but um, Houston uh, is done for the season and will be playing in the championship game next against East Carolina. Houston should win that one pretty relatively easy. Uh, right now, both Central Florida... Central Florida is playing for a potential ball berth, so they need to win this game against Massachusetts. It's the last game. At 6-6, six and six, they should make a bowl. At 5-7, and seven, they may make a bowl, but you can't count on it. Uh, Memphis is just playing for pride at this point. Um, Big 12, I talked about this. This one is interesting because if Oklahoma State wins, then they're in. I largely think Texas is in regardless of any result because um, Texas beat Oklahoma State. They don't play Oklahoma. So if Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma, then Frankie should make it in and play Kev. And, uh, however, if Oklahoma wins, of course, they're in. Uh, and it would be them versus Texas. So I have seen some strange stuff happen before based on ranking. Will I have seen the head-to-head get thrown out, which means that Kevin could, in theory, get screwed. If Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma and they both stay high-ranked, that could be Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State again. I don't think that's going to happen. I think whoever wins the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game is going to play Kevin for the Big 12 championship. And all these games matter. Kevin, of course, is done for the season. So uh, if he makes it to the title game, uh, he needs to win it because he's going to probably be close to the border for the playoffs. Um, Oklahoma, of course, can afford to lose a game and still probably be in the top 16 regardless. Oklahoma State needs to win this game against Oklahoma coming up. Otherwise, they could find themselves looking at not in the playoffs. Iowa State is a long shot to make it, but if anyone's going to pull it off, it's Shark. He's got one game left, and it's against Louisiana Monroe. So that game will carry some weight, even though Louisiana Monroe's not ranked. They are considered a top team. Uh, BYU, great job with Starfinder. West Virginia, great job with Mike. Uh, Of course, Texas Tech is just playing for pride at this point. Um, They're they're not going anywhere. Uh, with Texas, it's good that uh, Kevin's done because Blankenship's hurt. He needs him to get healthy. Uh, that's a critical piece. But keep an eye on Avery. He's having a great season. So is Felder, who's Oklahoma's quarterback. Um, I do like Iowa State to win this week against Louisiana Monroe. And then uh, BYU, I, I don't think they match up well against Texas A&M, but Starfinder may find a way. Um, Barham, who is the Texas A&M quarterback, is just really, really good. Uh, Big Ten, the East has decided it's Maryland. They have one game left against Rutgers, but even if they lose that, they have the game in hand on both Ohio State and Michigan, who, between the videos, they've beat Michigan, they beat Ohio State, they beat Texas. Uh, So Maryland is largely in. Um, Ohio State and Michigan should be in the playoffs. I I don't expect much slippage. They also, there'll be three teams from the Big Ten in, and they'll all be probably from the East. Penn State has been taken over by uh, um, David, sorry, uh, DWK. uh, And he's got them on a three-game winning streak. So they're playing for bowl berth at this point, which will be a major win for them given the season they've had. Uh, Frankie's got Iowa back on track, um, but it's a little bit too late. Wisconsin should win this, even though they're showing second. They still have two games left to play. Uh, They play... um, I forget who they play, but they play Purdue this week. But if they win those two games, they'll be playing Maryland for the Big Ten Championship. If they lose uh, one of those games, Nebraska probably makes it in. Um, But 
all in all, Wisconsin's had a really good year. Uh, this has been the year of the running back within um, the Big Ten with both Fang and LaFleur having great seasons. And, of course, Boreals is a candidate for um, the defensive player of the year. Uh, Conference USA, um, North Texas should win this. They just need to win their next game, and then they'll end. Uh, they'll play Marshall. Uh, no no big shock here, actually. Uh, North Texas was a good team. Marshall was a very good team, um, and they've beaten a couple big wigs. Uh, North Texas just needs to get past James Madison. It doesn't really matter what Marshall does at this point. They're already in. Uh, the MAC we talked about this. Western Michigan, nobody's going to beat them. They're already in the championship game. It's really who they'll play now, whether it's Bowling Green or Ohio. Either of those two teams that they play, they're going to win easily. Uh, Trans having a great year as a running back. And, uh, of course, Nebraska, Western Michigan. I expect Western Michigan to win that. UCLA should easily handle Kent State. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's Western Michigan's to lose. Uh, I hate to see this. Uh, Skelter's done a really good job of getting Boise State back on track. He's won six in a row. Unfortunately, one of his first games he lost was the Colorado State, who have taken the mountain. Uh, and then they will likely play Nevada, because uh, I think Nevada has game in hand on San Jose State. Uh, so if Nevada wins this week against Hawaii, it'll be Colorado State and Nevada. Boise State um, can land a pretty decent poll if they can win out the last game. Radcliffe is someone to keep an eye on. In the Pac-12, uh, this one's interesting. Stanford cannot. Uh, Stanford can make the playoffs, but they can't win. Go to the conference championship game in any scenario. But basically, the Apple Cup in Week 15 is: if Washington wins, they are the North champion. If Washington State wins, they are the North champion. Uh, so it'll be interesting because what it could mean is that you could have the North champion not make the playoffs. Uh, so it should be interesting. Van beat me last year with Washington, uh, and I'm at Washington State. But my hope is Washington State can win that, and then they'll face UCLA, where both those teams will be fighting for top seeding. Uh, nobody's going to beat UCLA. UCLA should finish the year undefeated. They got Kent State this week. Pops has had a down year with USC, but he'll bounce back next season. Uh, he gets Arizona. Merriman, of course, is a candidate for the uh, Heisman um, and is having a spectacular season with 27 touchdowns. Uh, in the SEC, LSU's won the West. Uh, Louisiana Monroe, we talked about that, has had a down year. If you're looking to join the league, Texas A&M, Alabama, Auburn are all great teams. Uh, I'd like to see the West become a little bit more competitive. Uh, in the East, um, Georgia and Tennessee ran into some pretty substantial roadblocks. Uh, Vanderbilt being one of them, and uh, having a down year. They play this year mostly for pride, but there is an outside chance that if Georgia can string together two quality wins, uh, that they could find themselves in the playoffs. It's a very long shot. Uh, Florida should be in, but it's, it'll be LSU versus Florida in the SEC title game. Uh, Ashby's a guy to keep an eye on for the Heisman. He's had a phenomenal year as well as Barham. Barham's more of a pro prospect. Uh, the Sun Belt will be New Mexico State versus Arkansas State, um, and that's not going to change. Uh, DWK took over Georgia Southern, uh, had them on a pretty good winning streak. They'll go to a bowl. So good job there. If we take a look at uh, recruiting real quick, um, Right now, Maryland is number one. I don't expect that to change. Maryland's had a very good recruiting year. Um, as you can see, they have eight five stars. The only person that has more is Florida State. Uh, but Maryland's done a good job of bringing in four stars, too. Uh, Ron Baker's a guy to keep an eye on. I really like him a lot, as well as the running backs out of Maryland. Georgia's the number two, so this is Shark. He's had a really solid recruiting season as well. Uh, Skelter always does well, although he lets the CPU do it. Um, He's had a strong year. Uh, Alabama's one of the CPU teams. If you want to come in and make an impact immediately, they would be a good team. Cable, despite his records, had a really solid year with 14 four-stars. That's pretty amazing. The big talk of those, Florida State with Sample, who has brought in nine five-stars, uh, and he just continues to make his team that much stronger. Uh, Wazoo is up there with 10 uh, four-stars. 
Uh, Mike's done a phenomenal job of LA Smog uh, at West Virginia. Uh, just he's making them stronger. Uh, not a smaller class for UCLA, uh, but they got a really good quarterback in O'Malley. And then, of course, I think Rush is going to be the sleeper of the five star population. So I really liked him. I just thought I had no chance with him at Maryland. And of course, Wazoo never had a chance with him. And then rounding out the top 10 is Auburn, who's another team to keep an eye on. Uh, the Buckeyes have two five stars. Um, both of them are probably going to be pretty good. And then Miami has one four star. So uh, recruiting, I don't expect much to change. Melton probably will have the number one recruiting class this year. Um, but everywhere behind it, that's pretty close. Um, we could see some movement there. In terms of league leaders, uh, just some names to call out. Uh, Wyatt uh, from Rice has had a very good year. So has Brewer Driscoll. He's having a horrible year ever since I did that video. Um, and teams have started keying in on the long pass. But um, it'll be interesting to see who wins the Davy O'Brien this year. The rushing yards, it's really between Ashby and Merriman at this point. Um, Merriman should get it because he has 27 touchdowns versus Ashby, I think, has like 12. But both of them have had solid years. Avery's had a great year, so has LaFleur. Um, and we see in terms of receiving Rice from uh, Rice from Rice is having a great season, should be the top wide receiver, although Schumacher and Desmond from Baylor are also up there. Um, in terms of sacks, we've talked about this one. It's a log jam up at the top uh, where you have quite a few with 12, but Hutchinson and Boyles and Brogan are probably the top three that I would call out. Interception-wise, again, um, you got Edwards who has an inside shot at getting it, but Granham and Kirby from Tulsa and Toledo are the top ones. Um, I don't know if I can see that, but let's see if I can see awards real quick. Uh, on the award watch, we mentioned Merriman uh, for the Heisman, uh, Brogan, Hutchinson, and Boyles for the Bednarik. Uh, Davy O'Brien is likely going to be, um, I, I think it's going to be Barham, but it could be Brule. Uh For the Bolitnikov, it's pretty wide open still, but I, I do like Rice for that. Um, I think this is the Lombardi, if I'm not mistaken. It, it's probably going to be Lopez. Um Again, most outstanding offensive player, it's going to be one of the two running backs. Um, the Doak Walker, I, I think the Doak is going to be Merriman just because they tend to put an emphasis on touchdowns. But for the senior quarterback, I, I do think Barham will win this, but Noah Brewer's got a pretty good strong chance. They both have had really strong years. Brewer, I actually think, will get it. He may get the Davy O'Brien too. The Mackey will likely go to... Um, uh, I, I don't know. That one's pretty wide open. Uh, the Walker Award should go to... Um, this one's pretty wide open still as well. Uh, and then you have the Buckus, which, um, again, it's pretty wide open, although I think Hawkins should win it. Um, and then for my personal opinion, the Thorpe should go to Morin, but I don't know that it will. Uh, it, may, it probably will go to Granham. And then, of course, we don't talk about kickers or punters. So pretty wide open season. Uh, some of the things I will say that I've noticed is the newer coaches have done a really, really phenomenal job this year. Uh, specifically, Kevin, uh, who's come in and just made a lot of noise. And um, Steve. Steve's not really a new coach, but he's a returning coach. Uh, just great job from both of them. And then, of course, you have Starfinder and you have L.A. Smog, Mike. Uh, who have just done a phenomenal job. Um, it, it's been a very wide open season, and it's been a very good season. If you have an interest in this league, there are a lot of good teams still open. I would highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to call it quits for now. Um, my next few videos will largely focus on the pro and the college game, again, by Wolverine Studios. The pro game, I'm going to talk about some of the things I'm doing on defense uh, that a couple people have asked me about because Pittsburgh is undefeated. They just, of course, came off of wins against uh, Oakland and a couple other quality teams. And I'll talk through what I've been doing, though. That's slightly different. One of the observations for this game that I will say is coaching does matter. Uh, so make sure you're getting good coaches and make sure you're playing in the style that your coaches are comfortable with. I'm noticing that more and more. 
And we already talked in previous videos about intelligence mattering a little bit more for quarterbacks than we used to think it did. Um, on the defensive line, I will tell you that speed rushers and bull rushers are important. And it's very important for you to understand the offensive line that you're playing against. Uh, because if you have both speed rushers and bull rushers, if their offensive line is weak, you bull rush them. If you they're slow, you speed rush them. So having a combination of strength and agility, which is a bull rusher, and then speed and uh, agility, which is more of a speed rusher, that matters in getting sacks. Um, and I'll, I'll talk more about that in the coming video. But again, thank you for your time. Hope you have a great week and talk to you soon. Thank you.